Now, Jeremy, this topic is a bit controversial because there are many haters out there. So much negativity. So there are many people saying CCNA is garbage. What do you think of them? Well, personally, I think these people, they are the real garbage. So CCNA, still the most popular ID certification, yeah? Right? Arguably. They're saying no need for CCNA. Go straight to cybersecurity or go straight learning cloud. You don't need to learn Cisco routing, Cisco switching stuff. What do you think about these people? Okay, so um, I wouldn't call them garbage, but um, you know, I obviously disagree as a CCNA instructor. Now, they might say I disagree because it's in my interest. You know, if people study CCNA and watch my course or buy my book, you know, I benefit. So that's the only reason I'm saying study for CCNA. But actually, it's the opposite. The reason I make materials for the CCNA is because I think it's so valuable and will continue to be valuable for a long time. Um, as we talked in the previous question, um, networking is a fundamental skill that you have to have in cybersecurity and also in cloud. Like, what is the CCNA, if you think about it? It's a networking fundamentals exam. And it also requires you to be able to apply those skills in a network. So you have to be able to build, uh, configure, and troubleshoot networks. So people who say that the CCNA is garbage, they're saying that you don't have to understand networking. We don't need people who know how to troubleshoot networks, which I think is obviously not true. And, you know, like um, even in the age of cloud or especially in the age of cloud, we need people who understand networks because, well, the clouds themselves are networks and you have to connect to the cloud. That's network. So, yeah, obviously I disagree with, um, with uh, those opinions for sure. Networking is one of the fundamental skills along with Linux, maybe some programming, you know, servers in general, you have to learn those skills before you can really be good at cloud or cybersecurity. Right, right. It's funny because a lot of people assume that you can easily move to cloud without basic networking foundation. Yeah, no way. No, like, it's not possible. It's very complex. complex. Yeah. A lot yeah. of services and technologies and uh, networking is actually probably one of the core, or if there are top three core, services or technologies the cloud is definitely networking is up there so oh, yeah for sure for sure yeah like, I'm, um I'm... to understand cloud like you mentioned top three we'll say what is it networking servers. linux yeah, yeah servers in general and linux and another one would be i don't know some kind of automation or programming i mean or databases things like that so mm -hmm. networking is definitely in that top three though that's for sure yeah so just don't listen to these people, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, in both aspects, like the knowledge is very useful and the cert, the certification is very useful. Like if you're trying to get into IT, having that CCNA certified, being able to put that on your resume will greatly increase your chances of at least getting an interview, if not getting the job. Um, I know it's hard to break into IT sometimes, depending on where you live and your work experience, your educational background, it can be difficult to get that first job into IT. But I think having the CCNA is like your best chance. That's like the biggest boost you can have to your resume to get that first job, get into the field of IT. Of course, aside from degree, it's, a, it's just certification. And of course, how you do well in, the, in your interview. But resume yeah, yeah. wise, uh, people or companies are looking more on your certifications versus the Greek, for example, especially uh, in the US or in other Western countries. Yeah, uh, I've started to notice that in, in job postings that yeah. less and less or fewer jobs require a degree. They want those certs. They want certifications. They want skills and knowledge that's really relevant to um, the job. Right, right. So degree is becoming less and less of a priority. It's yeah. more on certifications, right? Yeah, for sure. I agree 100%. And I should say that there are no guarantees. You mentioned it depends how well you do on the interview. That is yeah. definitely a factor also. So just because you have a CCNA doesn't mean like 100% I'm going to get a job. I'm going to get the job. You have to 
you know, make a decent resume. You have to, you know, dress nicely for the interview. You have to, you know, give good answers, um, just speak well and be likable. So, you know, there's no guarantees, but in terms of the resume side of things, the CCNA is, it's hard to beat for entry level. Of course. And of course, uh, people will have, will gain knowledge during the certification journey. And that may help you answer some of the technical questions in the interview. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I run a Discord server where we help people study for their CCNAs. And recently some people have gotten their jobs and they've they've said how much it helped them in their interview, answering questions like ask they're asked questions about OSPF or routing or switching, things like that. That's all stuff you learn on the CCNA. So if you study that well, you get the the knowledge down solid. Um, it'll definitely help you in the interview for sure. <laughs> All right, Jeremy, we're curious. Why are you in Japan? Okay, yeah, good question. So that goes into my history a bit. So I studied music at university, actually. I'm from Canada. So I studied music in the University of Toronto. I played classical guitar. But towards the end of university, I started realizing that I really don't want to do music as a career. Uh, it just wasn't for me. I like playing guitar, but as a job, not so much. So I started thinking about what I wanted to do next. And I couldn't really decide. Like, guitar was my passion for so long. It's all I focused on. So I didn't really know what I was interested in aside from that. So I just decided, OK, I'll go to another country to teach English for a few years while I think about it. So that's how I ended up in Japan. Uh, in university, I studied Japanese and some other languages a little bit. I thought, OK, Japanese is interesting. So I'll go to Japan. And yeah, that's why I'm in Japan. And at first, I thought it would only be for a few years, like two, maybe three years, and then I'll go back to Canada. But I like the lifestyle here. I like the country. It's a great place. Um, I've gotten used to it. So now it's been over nine years, and I'm still here in Japan. Uh, yeah, it's a great country. If anyone wants to visit, I highly recommend it. It's a great place. Right. Well, Japanese is actually my favorite city in Asia. Oh, no, Tokyo. Excuse me. Tokyo, Tokyo is actually my favorite city in Asia. And... Uh, I love this unique vibe, this unique culture. Like we know J Japanese technologies as a city, Tokyo is very high tech, but yeah. they still preserve their culture, the, the Japanese culture that you see everywhere. Even if you go to Ginza, um, um, Akihabara, the, the anime area, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a very <laughs> interesting mix of the new and the old. Um, Correct. They really respect their culture, their traditions. So, you know, even in, like you said, the downtown of Tokyo, the most uh, highly developed places, you'll still find old temples and all this traditional stuff uh, very well preserved. They really take good care of it. It's a great mix of the modern and the traditional. <laughs> 